everybody, this is Monkey Puzzle, and I've just been out collecting bees, as you just saw. Uh, and we're going to do some bees today. And i got one thing here at the Savannah base that I want to show you first. Uh, as part of this whole, uh, we've, you know, we've got the skeleton grinder. Gosh, my inventory is full. The four spawner skeleton grinder and the turtle auto XP uh, book enchanter that's uh, going into the book sorting, the enchanted book sorting system. Uh, over here, uh, with all the bones that, uh, here, let me take you back up there and show you. With all the bones that are coming from the skeletons, uh, which are about to fill this one extra dimensional barrel, and I had to start another one for when that gets full, um, started using those for the tree farm. Well, we have been using them for the tree farm, but now I've got it so that they're pumping in automatically to this area over here and the clay golems are using that to keep these stocked exactly full and we have an intruder in here somewhere <laughs> which I'll deal with when I see him um, but uh, let me start at the beginning and then I'll take you over there uh, almost out of juice in my gravity chest plate um, but yeah so they're coming from here and down below over here, I've done my first uh, red power pneumatic tubing, and I derped up so much that I didn't record it because uh, it took me a while to figure out how to do stuff, but it's pretty simple. Uh, that's the barrel right there, and I made a um, filter right here. And uh, let me turn the sound down real quick because the uh, skeletons. And that whole thing is very loud. It's actually the Miscraft portal that's the loudest, actually. Um, okay, so we've got a filter there pulling from the bottom of the barrel. And a filter, uh, which you could look up yourself, I'm sure, but uh, it is made like this. Pretty simple. Uh, this is the new thing that I had to come up with, a red doped wafer. So in an alloy furnace, and that's just a furnace where you can put the uh, eight brick uh, blocks around to get that. Uh, you do a silicon wafer and four redstone and the silicon wafer is uh, a silicon boule chopped up with a diamond handsaw and silicon boule is just eight sand and eight coal stuck in that same alloy furnace. So a few steps to it but none of it really any big deal um, and put together my first red power machine, the filter. And then it took me a while to figure out, but uh, they only work when they get a redstone signal. So this is a uh, red power timer, uh, and there's a whole little uh, thing to building that. wasn't that big of a deal either, but I'll show you guys that in another episode. Um, but you can look it up pretty easy too. Um, but I think uh, just re-smelting stone gives you the basic part for it, the little flat. Uh, whatever you call it. Anyway, I've got this set real slow and <laughs> clicking on it <laughs> just crashed me. Let me get back and I'll get back to you.
All right, let me try that again. Yeah, you see, you can set the interval of the timing there, and I've got it on 420 seconds, so every seven minutes uh, it sends a signal, um, because it's sending a stack of bone meal each time, and that gets multiplied by three, so it takes a while to use it, and right now it's not even being used because I don't have the tree farm going, but I've had it going uh, quite a bit, and uh, I've got so much uh, oak logs from running it that uh, I had to start another barrel up here. I came one point and they were just shooting out so it gets a second. Got it uh, paused right now because uh, we're gonna go do something else. Um, the pneumatic tube goes underneath here, comes up here, and sends all the bones to this iron chest. Uh, it could even be a regular chest because it gets stocked regularly so it doesn't have to be big. And that is uh, connected to a auto crafting table which draws from the iron chest and it's just got this simple recipe in there to make bone meal and then we've got the um, the autarkic gate at this point which if it gets a redstone signal it does the energy pulser and pulls uh, the bone meal out of here in order to get the redstone signal that comes from this gate on this structural pipe uh, which if there's a space in here, let's just do that and throw that away for the sake of it, it gets a redstone signal, it, uh, it sends a redstone signal, which triggers this autarkic gate, and that uh, triggers all this to send the bone meal into here. Um, so yeah, this is continually kept stock full of bone meal, uh, which is continually being supplied by our XP grinder over there. So all these systems are now working together, and these nice little clay golem guys who never ask for nothing in return are happy to keep uh, these two chests stocked with it. So that was a little something I did off camera. Uh, finally doing some of my first red power piping. So now that I've done that, I'll be able to do a lot more and I'll try to do the next one on camera, but uh, it took me a while to figure it out, so it's probably better that I did the first time. Uh, here's the alloy furnace. Pretty simple. I've got it just making uh, red doped wafers right now, or I did. Um, for some reason, it's not making any more. I don't know why not, uh, but uh, anyway. Yeah, that's that. So I'm going to get my inventory sorted uh, right now. i got to charge up and do a few other things. And I'm going to meet you for the next part of today's episode in just a second for you. I think I got it mostly cleared out now. At least uh, everything else that needs to come out is going to go where we're going. To the bees! Let's go to the bees. It's been a while since I've taken you guys here and it has changed. Uh, I don't know if you remember how it was before. Oh, you just saw a little something happening there. Um, but I've made it more homey and uh, a little less homey too. <laughs> this little B and A decoration might be a little too much, but we'll see. Uh, maybe I should show you guys a little shot of how it was last time, just to remind you. And now we're up to this. So yeah, we've got our little B and A coming from the bottom. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, put windows in uh, that you can see outside now, and uh, cleaned up all the uh, apiaries that were out here. Uh, we just have our ones that are in the hill at this point. Um, you saw the uh, me putting the uh, red rock floor in before. Got our bed and uh, our miscraft books all in their nice little stands to take us to our various places. Um, I'll get into the guts of it in a second. Uh, let's see, just out here. Got everything lit up uh, quite a bit around. Been playing with these uh, Zycorium lamps or whatever they're called. I forget uh, the name of these, uh, but yeah. Got everything lit up and nice and homey. Got some little decorations, some bugs from the Twilight Forest, and got potted plants everywhere and flowers. And uh, anyway, yeah, it's come a, come quite a ways. And got our machines set up here now. Uh, the last thing I did when we were here is we just piped up 
this uh, one apiary and I did, haven't done much more because I've been waiting for you but you remember that the uh, wooden pipe with the autarkic gate is pulling from it when uh, there's stuff in the inventory and then this nice uh, apiarist pipe which is just two pieces of um, propolis on either side of a diamond pipe was set up to sort out the bees and the items um, and then the anything and so the bees are going this way and oh actually no the bees go here first um, and so if once we get a princess and the, the drone in there uh, then any bees left that don't fit will then go that way and I'll show you what happens to them uh, I had a chest here before and then the items go this way and let's start there so all the honeycomb um, comes on this way and goes into this centrifuge and uh, while I'm here I've got a bunch of products that I picked up while I was out there in the wild hunting down more bees uh, for today's episode um, yeah so the uh, products from the uh, centrifuge are then pumped out through this autarkic <laughs> that word can mess me up sometimes the autarkic gate puts them into this iron chest um, and we've gotten beeswax and propolis and silky wisps and lots of honey drops um, and I've got it set up for the next thing over here which is this gate if there's items in inventory uh, do the energy pulser and pull stuff out but I put it on an emerald pipe so that it's only going to pull out honey drops the honey drops come on over to this squeezer and uh, it's going to be making honey out of this so we'll get that going right now they're all coming over here now is waiting for you guys to uh, start this part so you can see it in action uh, one part I'm pretty proud of and I originally got this idea from life-size teddy bear is that these are drawing their power from these redstone energy cells but I got it hooked up so that the uh, redstone energy cells only get a signal uh, when these have work to do so there's an automatic on off switch uh, for these and see if I can do it down here it's been a while actually I don't exactly remember how I did it uh, let me see oh yeah so uh, I've got underneath the centrifuge and the squeezer I've got these structural pipes with these gates and the gates are uh, hooked up that if there ha if it has work do a redstone signal right back here it's hard to see um, there is a um, some alloy wire red alloy wire and see how that one is getting the signal right now from this gate and that is telling this uh, energy cell to uh, send power I've got the uh, energy cells basically set up so that they require a redstone signal to work and that's when the signal required is high so yeah uh, first uh, really fully automatic uh, powering of these forestry devices that I've pulled off so far that works pretty well um, and then the uh, I've got this liquid duct hooked up right here that is ready to pull the honey out from the squeezer so and then over here uh, I haven't used it yet is actually our acclimatizer sitting there getting power um, but we will get into that later I don't even know if we'll get to that today uh, so down here uh, we've got the power system everything's coming in from uh, energy tesseract right now uh, just for convenience sake I have this one that was uh, since I'm not running the tree farm I'm getting the power uh, that was going to that so uh, eventually I'll change that but it doesn't really matter right now so yeah that tesseract is giving energy to this redstone energy cell directly here and then I've got two outputs coming out of it uh, the reason I did that and the reason I threw this one in the system too is uh, when I put all the genetic machines in there they're gonna be wanting insane amounts of power so I had to uh, some of them want more than 100 MJ a tick, uh, which is the maximum this will give uh, from one of its sides. Now, the, I think 
I know it's true for the redstone energy cells. Actually, I do not remember if it's true for the uh, Tesseract, but they're limited to 100 MJ a tick, but that's per side. So this would be 100 MJ, but this would be 200 MJ, and then 300 MJ, 400 MJ, which is more than we'll ever need. So, and we've got backup power with these two energy cells here as well. Uh, which will serve as batteries if for some reason this ever goes down, which it actually did recently. I ran out of uh, my lava tesseract stopped working. Uh, the, the pump that's in the nether that's hooked up to the lava tesseract stopped being able to pull up lava. And I'll go into more detail about that next episode when we do some more stuff with power. And I'll tell you all about that and start setting up some alternatives. But anyway, that's the power system. Over here is the end of that uh, liquid duct that's coming from the squeezer that uh, is full of honey. And I didn't turn it on, I didn't connect it here yet because I wanted to show you this uh, Zycraft tank I made. I made one over here too. This one's full of BNA uh, that's coming from the excess bees that are coming up from over there so far in this apiary. I've only had, uh, that's not the apiary, that's the apiary. I've only had uh, one set, one cultivated, uh, basically cultivated bees just going in this infinite cycle. And every time the cultivated queen dies, she makes uh, a drone or two and then a princess and princess and the drone cycle back in here and uh, do it again. Um, so just this one apiary going so far, it's filled to the top with the drones uh, and so 63 is is the max you can have in here once you have a queen because it takes one of the drones and all the other drones have been going down the pipe to the gene pool machine which I built the last episode we worked on the bees and they're getting dissolved into BNA which I think is pretty <laughs> it's very neat looking stuff so uh, I've got it piped up there to feed the gen genetic machines that we're eventually going to hook up to it, but I also uh, just wanted to use it for decoration a little bit too. Yeah, so this is in a Zycraft tank, and then I've got this one all set up, ready to go uh, with the honey. I just Before I did that, I wanted to show it to you how it works. Uh, basically, you make these things, uh, the valves, so we can press R and get the recipe for that. It's just a bucket and iron bars between some dark engineering bricks and you get the valve dark engineering or any engineering bricks actually uh, which is you got some uh, basically some stone brick uh, material whether it's cracked or chiseled or mossy um, and I just made the regular one because that was easy for me to manufacture and a redstone in the middle and four uh, zycoridite ingots uh, on the four corners here and you get engineering bricks and then you can make these valves um, and then you hollow out a space uh, out of almost any material uh, certain materials that wouldn't make sense otherwise like uh, gravel and dirt uh, and sand for instance will not work. I also found out that red rock doesn't work uh, and when you hollow these spaces out, the tricky part is that uh, it took me a while to uh, get this one working because there's some corners you can't see. So back in here, you got to make sure that all of these are all uh, appropriate material. I had some dirt hiding in there that kept it from working at first. I found out the ore does work, so that's cool. We can leave those for looks and, and uh, glass and these glass viewer blocks work. I just got it lit up here. so. I don't know if it would let monsters spawn in the uh, tank or not if it was empty. It'd be kind of interesting, but uh, it did this just for light. These are going to be covered over, probably never to be seen again, but that's why I put light all the way at the very topmost part, too. Anyway, uh, talking a lot, but uh, yeah, you put the valve in there, and all you got to do is right click it. And kaboom, you've got a Zycraft tank. And you can tell because you've got these little jagged lines. They kind of go in and out depending on your angle or or what uh, Optifine is doing or how far away you get from it. Uh, but you know it's there. And while I'm down here, I'm going to finish uh, connecting this up uh, to some liquid ducts. So let me go ahead and 
actually down here, I should grab that. I should get a lever because uh, that's required for the liquid duct to work. So let's go ahead and turn that lever on and yeah, let's fly up and start uh, putting this stuff here. And I forget uh, whether that's in or out. That's out. That's where we want it to be. And then uh, let's start stacking up uh, some liquid ducts. Come on. There we go. And we'll be using these uh, in a minute. So that's probably good. Okay, so now that I've done all that, we can go ahead and connect up the flow of honey. And if I did it right, uh, that should come in through this valve. Yep, and start filling up the tank. So that's going to be a lot of honey. Uh, that could hold, what is that, up to 2,880 buckets of honey. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we got stuff to do with that. And the first thing I want to do is we need to get a, um, what do you call them? What do you call them? Uh, one of these uh, over here, a beelizer. Uh, basically, we need to get a beelizer block set up, a beelizer machine. I've got, this is the little handheld one here. And uh, when you look at it, oops. You can analyze your bees, and uh, yeah, let's do one right now. Uh, I've got this nice backpack full of bees. This is the product of my collecting. Um, we got forest and meadows, lots of marble and valiant. Oh wow, I wonder where we got that one. And marbled water, forest, wind tree, marshy. Uh, so yeah, these were the product of that foray I just did. Uh, let's take one of those. How about, uh, where was that Valiant? That's an interesting one. Uh, let's go ahead and put it in this handheld beelizer. And it then gives you a bunch of information. you got to feed it with a honey drop. So i got to keep some of my honey drops all the time. Can't let them all turn into honey. Um, but now it gives us information about all these things to get into. Lifespan, speed, pollination, what kind of flowers it wants, how fertile it is, the area, the effects, its effect, this one has none, and, uh, and so on. All the climate, temperature, humidity. Oh, it's nocturnal. That's very useful. Uh, that means that the apiaries will still be active at night. They won't be active when it's raining, and it will work if it doesn't have access to the sky. So we know all that about it. It uh, produces honeycomb, but maybe it can produce sugar as well. Uh, possibly mutations it will show us as we get closer to it, or maybe if we do them. And then this is just a little bit of stuff, a little, some words. So, yeah, now, so we're going to turn that into a block, and the reason is is that the uh, gene pool will give us twice the BNA if, if they're analyzed first. So we got to set that up automatically. And to do that, uh, i got to see what I'm going to need to do it. I'm moving really fast this episode because I've got a lot to do, and uh, we may not even get through it all at this rate. So this can be kind of buzzing through all the stuff. Um, it's not a beelizer anymore. Uh, I wonder if I put B. There it is. It's the B analyzer now. So, oh, that's easy. Uh, we're just going to put the beelizer in the middle of these, and eventually I'll make my own handheld beelizer. Again, we got to do that in the carpenter like that, so that's no big deal. But let's just use one that we got. Let me just remind myself: gold in the corners and redstone on the sides. So. Uh, let's see if I even have that on me right now. I might have it in the miner's backpack. Let's see. I do. So there's four gold and four redstone. And let me see. Let me get my little minium stone down here and press my special button. And we'll just put that in the middle. Redstone on the sides, I believe, is what I said. And there we go. We've got a B analyzer. So. It needs honey to work. Um, 
I forget if it also needs power, but I'm going to put it here. And uh, this is a good place too. Oops, I'm in a hole. Because uh, up here is our indexer where we store all our bees. So sometimes if I don't want them to get melted down for BNA, I'm going to have to set up a way here somehow where they can also get filtered up that way. So maybe I'll have some sort of use a uh, apiarist pipe here to differentiate. Uh, so this can go here and hopefully honey is all it wants. Uh, let's see, though we might as well face it that way. Oh, right click, there we go. And then I assume that we're going to need to do something on this side to pump them out. Uh, let's see what I got here. I may or may not have any, I keep doing that, wood pipes on me. I don't. I have an autarkic gate, um, so let's let me see if I can get a wood pipe up here real quick. And I might have it in this chest. I do. All right. So prepared. <laughs> okay. So let's put the wood pipe there. Uh, right now, I'm just melting them all down because they're all the those cultivated drones, which are a dime a dozen at this point. Um, but uh, let's put a wood pipe on it and set this to uh, items in inventory energy pulser. So that should pull them out of here and we'll be doubling our uh, BNA production, the B DNA, nice shiny pink stuff. Uh, and yeah, it's not telling me it needs any power. So I think we're good. Uh, it's hard to know when the next one of these is going to come. Let's see. Uh, we got a while. Um, but I'm going to assume that's going to work. Uh, so that's all set up. And it's... I think that's what I needed. That's not connected. And you know, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, it's looking different than the block that... I wanted it to be. Let me see. I think all the B stuff was on uh, page 35. Do I remember that correctly? Um, no. Where was it? Uh, let me find them and I'll get right back to you. Alright, I found it. And it's just called an analyzer. And I made the wrong one. I put my B, I have to put my B-lizer like this to do it. So in interest of time, I'm just going to run back to this fan base and make another B-lizer and get this all set up and we'll do this. Okay, so I'm going to put some power right here. And there it is. Our B-lizers are being made. I'm going to make two of them. And here comes the second, I believe. There's one, there's the other. Okay. And then so one of these is going to go straight over here and it's going to become, what did I do with them? <laughs> I leave them in here? I always do that. Okay. Uh, this is all set up. Now we have the correct analyzer. So I'm going to run this back over to the bees. And we can go ahead and set it up as soon as I figure out which way I'm pointing. There we go. So we'll take this one out. And whatever it's for. And put this one in. The analyzer. So what happens if it goes that way? That's a good way. We can see the bee right there. And then, yeah, it's filling with honey. It's happy. So yeah, it's ready to receive bees, hopefully, uh, if these two directions work. Uh, let's look again. If the uh, oh this one's almost dead so I'll pause I'll keep an eye on this and then uh, we'll watch right when it happens in the meantime I just wanted to show you that uh, all the honey drops are out of here now the squeezer has been busy doing its work uh, it's almost used up all the honey drops and we've got a good amount of propolis so that's going to fuel uh, or help us craft all the apiarist pipes we're going to need from here. Uh, that's quite a few. Well, this will be a good start anyway, and we have some left over from other endeavors. Um, and the tank is getting... Well, it's going to take a while to fill, but that was the point <laughs> of making it so big. 
but at this point, uh, we've got 41 buckets of honey in there. Not bad. Uh, Winnie the Pooh would be happy. Uh, let's see how this is doing. And oh, we missed it. Well, I'm gonna assume, since I don't see a bee anywhere, <laughs> that it happened all right. Dang, I tried to show you that. Um, okay, well, I'll wait for one more, and then I'll show you that. Uh, especially since I was going to do a bunch of breeding this episode, too. And that was the reason why I collected all those bees. I wanted to take you through going from a meadows in the forest to a common to a cultivated and see if we could get to uh, imperial and, and uh, industrious in an episode. But uh, I don't want to rush through that. Uh, probably have used up most of the half hour already. So uh, I think I'll save that to, for the next time we do the bees so that I can do it in a calm way and uh, make the information able to transfer better. Um, anyway, woo! There's a honeycomb. <laughs> it landed in here in the centrifuge. And you got to see that. The product's going to appear there real quick and then get pulled out the back. I guess that one only made some beeswax. Uh, okay, I'm going to show you this one more thing when I can watch it happen. Uh, so be back with that. All right, I figured out how I'm going to show you this and show myself. And I just got a stack of cultivated drones. Oh, and I was going to put them in here, but I can't. Never mind. Uh, but I can put them in here. So let's go ahead and do that. And you can see that... Uh, it's going through them. I wonder how that one ended there. That's interesting. That was the one. Oh, it did it. That's right. Oh, that means they're not pumping out correctly. Uh, so this items and inventory energy pulser is not working. Because, yeah, there we got an analyzed B. And these are all analyzed as well. Um, so, the, yeah, that was the B that uh, came from over there. And you can see uh, the ones that I brought in are the slowest workers. That was just a slower worker. Uh, but i got to figure out how to get these things pumping out directly. So I must just be doing it from the wrong side. Or, well, the sides will all be identical. So I either got to take it out the top or the bottom. My guess is i got to take it out the bottom. And if I open this, I'm going to lose a lot of honey. Uh, but I guess I'm just going to have to live with that. You can see there's another bee in there that just came in through the tube. Um, I'm going to wait till it's done. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's in there now. Uh, I'm going to, before I break it and lose that honey, I'm going to see if I can pick it up with a portal gun. And of course I can't. So we're just going to have to go ahead and do that. And see if this works. If I put it on top oops shift if it's going to be able to pull out of the bottom uh, let's put one in there oh now it needs honey too right and then uh, these are able to go into from the side that's okay uh, let's get some liquid ducts and we'll bring the honey up oh let's see this come in from over here perhaps uh, this is going to want to go up there so the honey can come around underneath. Uh, this, this doesn't feel that elegant, but I guess that's just how it's going to be. Uh, since we have to, I'm assuming we're going to have to pull these out from the bottom. So let's do that. Get honey in again. Uh, connect it up this way. And... When that's done, which should be soon, uh, we will see if it gets pulled out. So we'll see it go in here and disappear, hopefully. Yep. And it's working its way out. And now it's going to zoom into the gene pool, which is going to melt it into that lovely BNA, uh, which will go directly, that's a neat graphic, uh, directly into here. So, yep, there you have it. 
So that's the basic nuts and bolts now of the whole B base here. It's come a long way since the last time. So we've got a lot of our basic machinery in here ready to go. Uh, still going to do some genetic machines, but the next step is going to be to put more apiaries in here and do more breeding. This can accommodate quite a few on different levels that will all get piped up and be doing their thing automatically or not. The breeding initially will do by hand just to uh, make sure that we get that right. There's ways to automate that but it requires uh, computer craft programs that I'm not quite ready to get into for bees or I don't know maybe I'll surprise myself. I saw Dire Wolf do it and uh, there's a program he put up on Pastebin. Um, but yeah we'll get there. Anyway this is Monkey Puzzle, and that was the bees for the day. I like it over here. I think it's neat. Uh, anyway, uh, we'll be back to this very soon. Bye-bye.